hanging out near Venice Beach, Santa Monica, California. It's getting a little cool, uh, but this is such a wonderful place to ride bikes and I'm getting to check out the Beria City Easy Board Bionics. And you can see that it's got the Bionics battery pack and motor in the back here. And they're really just sort of added on to that Easy Board platform that Beria has pioneered. And you might recognize this type of frame if you've been looking at other electric bikes that are really low step through. It's only like four and a half inches off the ground, three and a half clearance. So you do have some, but it's actually lower than the chain ring. Um, I'll get to more of that later, but the idea being, you know, as, as you're carrying stuff or as you, you want to relax, you're not going for mountain biking, you're not going for speed, or you, you just want the comfort. You want some assistance to get up those hills or fight the wind. There's a little bit of a breeze right now. One thing you're not looking for is this, you know, swinging the leg over and trying to deal with the high step frame, being able to just like literally just barely step over like that and control this bike and have the handlebar swept back close to you. So your head can be up, you can be enjoying the view, you can be, you know, focused on cars and stuff. It's kind of a busy street over here and it feels nice to have that control. And part of the control with this bike is electric assist. So that's the idea. Um, I've measured this bike, like the reach, the standover height, all of that back at the website, um, included the specs there. This bike comes in a couple different colors that I've seen, including this silver and then black. I chose the silver one because it's it's more visible, especially as you get to, to riding at night and kind of dusk times like right now. I don't, I don't want cars to miss me. Um, there is an integrated light in the battery pack, which is great because aftermarket lights can fall off and you can forget to charge them and stuff. So that's a really neat thing that Bionics has done there. I also love that they've got these aluminum fenders. They haven't been rattling too much. You know, they're, they're attached pretty well. I've got an extra support arm down there. Um, and then the adjustable stem right here. So I was talking about comfort before with these swept back bars. That stem can be angled up or down just to really, you know, suit your body position. A really big oversized Velo saddle. It's branded Beria, um, but you know, I checked it and Velo makes it. The seat post surprised me. It's like 30.0 millimeters diameter. I'm used to seeing 30.9. Perhaps that was a, a mistake on the stamp or something. But I'm telling you this because if you want to improve the comfort on this bike, you can get like a seat post suspension, body float, Thudbuster makes them for like 150 to 250 dollars. And then that's gonna add a little bit of cushion in addition to the rubber bumpers that you can see under there and just the, the general padding and the tires. I've seen another model. Uh, I don't know how custom this is or how stock it is. I just saw it at Bike Attack, uh, which is an electric bike store here. You can actually see the orange on the side of their building. Um, the other one that they had had these big Schwabby, like Fat Frank balloon tires that are a little bit more cushy. This one just has generic Kendas. Um, you know, they're, they're not super high end. They don't have a reflective sidewall stripe or anything, but they're, I picked it cause I thought again, the silver was nice and these might be more standard. So 26 by 1.75, that's a medium width. It's not super narrow, but it's also not quite as cushy. It's just kind of efficient. It's generic, which is fine. I love that in addition to this deep step through, they've got bottle cage bosses right here that you could add a, maybe a little mini pump or a bottle cage. Um, up here, I see a lot of people do like the cup holder style cages. It's a little easier than reaching down here and then you don't kick it when you're hopping on the bike, but at least they have that, it's an option. Um, they have had to kind of reinforce this frame. It's aluminum and in so doing, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, they want it to be stiff, but when you've only got one bar here, it's you can see that it's kind of gusseted on the sides. Um, but I think, I think there's still a little bit of frame flex, like if you're really steering hard, because a lot of that weight is back uh, and, and sort of high up. You've got the bigger motor, I think it's like a nine pound motor, and then an eight pound battery pack way up there on that rack. Keep in mind that over time you ride, you want to make sure these bolts are tight. You might even put some Loctite blue on those just to keep this thing in shape. The spokes are a little bit oversized at 12 or 13 gauge back here, and then I believe 14 gauge up in the front. So that's just another kind of precautionary measure they've taken to make sure this thing rides smooth. Kind of a generic drivetrain, Shimano Turney TX, seven speeds. I believe it's 14 to 
34 with that really big sprocket that's for climbing and then up front you only have one chain ring and it's got 40 teeth i counted them love that they've got a plastic chain guide it's going to keep the chain from bouncing off because you know it's not really fun to get your hands dirty and put it back on and with e-bikes especially ones with throttles like this you can be throttling it and the chain's just bouncing the whole time a lot of times what i'll do is shift up to an easier gear which means i can't pedal because it's so fast but it makes the chain tighter versus a higher chain there's a lot there's more looseness and it's a decent derailleur but you know it has to like stretch that chain a little bit more there's more chain to flop around versus wrapping it on the higher ring it's an advanced topic but just a just a heads up if you're losing a chain a lot go to an easier gear love that they've got a little bit of a protector here derail your guard that's so that if the battery or if the bike tips over the wind's blowing or something you know this hits instead of the sensitive parts here that are spring loaded and can go out of true so i love that all right vp pedals plastic rubber tread not super great there's a lot of stuff on this bike that i like including the, the fenders and I, I think i said aluminum before but I, I actually think they're steel steel fork i like that stuff but then there's other stuff that's generic you know pro max um, linear pull brakes versus disc brakes. They just require a little bit more hand effort. Promax levers, and this one has a motor inhibitor that I believe activates regen, which is nice. It's one of the neat things about a gearless hub, but they're charging a lot for it. You know, this bike is, is not cheap. Uh, they're asking 2750 for it here. Pedego has that boomerang and it's in like the 2500. So you're, you know, saving a couple hundred bucks. The big difference is I weighed this and this is like 50.5 pounds versus 62 pounds i think for the boomerang much heavier and i think it's just the way they, they mounted the battery and stuff the specs on this is 350 watt gearless um peaks out higher than that but i'm not sure exactly how much 40 newton meters of torque silent kind of bulletproof you know it's just magnets there's no gears inside or anything um you get regen but it's maybe not quite as zippy and powerful right from the get-go as pedigo and you actually have to get the bike going a couple few miles per hour before the throttle will even work or pedal assist that's a safety feature it's torque sensor driven so it's really smooth and fluid but you do have to work a little harder to get pedal assist going but again you've got that nice little variable speed throttle right here so i really like that the battery is 48 volt 8.8 .8 amp hours above average in terms of size it's got a deep sleep mode so it automatically shuts down if it hasn't been used for a couple months or if it's down to 10 percent it shuts down in a matter of days maybe it's like 10 days so it's designed to protect itself and last a long time and that's something that bionics is kind of pioneered and engineered into their system i really like i think they've done a good job um, so yeah everything's all hooked up i wanted to show you how to remove the battery i've already unlocked it over here and then you just slide from the back might have to brace the bike a little bit and then you can carry that separately and as i was saying before it's about eight pounds so you significantly reduce the weight of the bike you know now this is probably only 42 43 pounds and it's going to be a little bit more balanced uh, it's a rear heavy bike and that's kind of a bummer sometimes because it's going to be a little easier to tip there we go trying to line that up properly put it in push that button there we go we're locked in <laughs> you can charge it on or off the bike by the way with the charging port coming back the rack max weight is 25 kilograms here which is like 55 pounds but there's already eight pounds taken up so just be careful on how much how how much you load this it does have tie downs for panniers and trunk bag and everything um, so anyway i was talking about rear heavy and high up weight sometimes when i'm moving a bike like this i grab the handlebars i lift and i'm trying to steer and the back of the bike does not want to lift it's heavy that's where all the weight is and it kind of tips sideways it sort of you know it can fall on your leg a little bit this isn't my favorite design you know I, the best thing would be like all the weight like right there in the center of the bike low you can't always do that you know this so this is a fairly elegant solution one that gives you some you know cargo capacity and it's just it's just worth keeping in mind you don't want that to tip on you you want to make sure it's secure and i, I like that they have this pretty sturdy nouveau adjustable length kickstand um, right there and just some other highlights that they've got the stainless steel nipples um, decent rims those bigger spokes i was talking about it's you know there's a good combination of stuff here and i just i like that at least it's it's not quite as heavy as some of the alternatives in this deep step through segment okay 
So here's the power on off button. I love the display, it's removable. So you can take this off if you're parking it outside, you don't want the sun to shine on it or get it scratched. It's kind of symmetrical, the buttons are on both sides. Powering it up, and if you hold down that right button right here where it says power, that turns on the light. So the display says light on, it's backlit now. And we've got that rear light that I was talking about before to keep you kind of visible. And that's nice because a lot of times you put a light on the seat tube, seat post, and your coat kind of sloughs over it. Or maybe you put a bag and you forget. Now you're not getting any tail light. So having it built in the battery like that is really cool. We've got four levels of regen. And if I arrow down over here, you know, it gives me increasingly more difficult challenge you're actually using that motor as a generator and it's creating a workout for you like you're climbing a hill so it could be like a workout bike that's that's a neat feature and then if you go plus which again you can do over here or on the display you go all the way up to the fourth level of pedal assist that's going to be the most power it's going to use the battery quicker but it's also just zippier it feels nice and in any of those pedal assist modes you can override by using the throttle if you're moving two miles per hour um, i love that they have eight little um, bars on the battery infographic right there because it's going to be a little bit more precise in how much capacity remains and if you press this circulate button here this like recycle icon it goes from you know showing you the distance the odometer chrono which is like how long this trip has lasted average speed clock and then back to distance so you really a lot of feedback in something that's pretty sleek and elegant and it's adjustable angle so you can kind of slide it and tip it so if you're getting glare from the sun like that, you know, you can you can reduce the glare. So great stuff overall. Uh, I like Bionics. I feel like they do a good job. They've got a good warranty. I think it's you know two years on their electronics and stuff, and they've been around for a long time. In some ways, hub motors and things are a little bit simpler, and there's the weight and stuff. But in others, you know, it doesn't interfere with the drivetrain. It's not a mid drive. It doesn't create as much noise. You get the regen kind of fun feeling and you get a nice display so can't complain too much i think the only thing is that you know the price on this one's a, it feels a little bit high but it's it's unique there just aren't that many you know e-bikes that look like this that are so easy to use out there so i'm gonna hop on this thing and ride around a little bit you might not be able to hear the motor but we're gonna try anyway just put you back there i'm gonna coast down this little grass hill and then you're gonna see what happens Oh boy, getting lots of speed there, crossing over. I'm not hearing the fenders rattle a whole lot. Here's a grassy hill, I can kind of climb up it. I'm not pedaling at all right now. It's pretty awesome, just a nice feeling. I, I like to have the throttle, it gives you a lot of control. But this time I'm gonna use pedal assist. You know, I talked about those levels of regen before, but I just activated the right brake lever and you know you can see the display shows right now you're an assist but as soon as i pull that lever now it says g and that stands for generate it's generating electricity that's a really cool feature so here we go i'm gonna pedal i'm feeling it and it's proportional to my my pedal power so even though i'm in the highest level of assist it's not getting crazy it's not taking me off the line too fast because I'm not pedaling really hard, but as soon as I really put some energy in, now, now I'm going, and the top speed on this is about 20 miles per hour, which is phenomenal. Whoa, there's a little bit of a delay in the cutout there, but you can always pull that brake lever and kind of keep that motor at bay. So I'm back in the Bike Attack store and I just wanted to show you what those other tires look like. They're real big and spongy and just kind of fun. And even the fenders, they're a little bit wider, they match it. This is the other color, matte black. And here's the silver one. You can see the light a little bit better now that it's kind of dark inside. And I wanted to demonstrate a little bit of that flame flex I was talking about. You can see there's just a little bit of crack the whip going on. When you've got that much weight and it's in the back, that's kind of always the case, but I think that Frankly, given there's one big tube right there, this bike actually feels nice when you're riding it around. It's a cool system. I was excited to see this and just curious. I don't know how official the bike is. You're getting a great system. I believe this is the S350 from Bionics. That's the drive system. And then you're getting the Beria bike with the deep step through. And they just work really well together. I think it's a, it's a nice match. 
to the full write-up on this, including some of those other measurements about size and some pictures and just some other thoughts, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. And of course, especially if it's kind of the nighttime, it's getting to be dusk, ride safe.